It's the first time I think I've really been proud of myself. The doctors uh, were not sure that uh, one day in the future I will be able to walk. You start walking and you realize you knew nothing and that you have the time from when you start to end to find yourself just a little bit more. Hi, we are Eric and Ricky. We not only walk Camino de Santiago, but we also help others in the preparation and ask them important questions. Today we'll ask, what is the real reason you decided to walk the Camino de Santiago? Uh, William Quinn, I'm from the USA, California, Orange County, Huntington Beach. I'm Jackie Quinn, I'm uh, 51 years old. I'm from Huntington Beach, born in El Salvador. Um, and we just watched the French Camino. Could you briefly describe your experience on the Camino? Yeah, it's not only a physical experience, but it's a mental challenge and it's a physical and it's a spiritual journey. It is, and I, if I could add one more thing, it is a self-discovery. It is, you go out there and you have these thoughts of what you think it's gonna be, you start walking and you realize you knew nothing and that you have the time from when you start to end to find yourself just a little bit more in the Camino of Life, but you're doing it in the Camino of Santiago. All right, my name is Maria Gandarillas. I live in Miami, Florida, and I just finished the Frances from Villafranca del Bierzo to Santiago de Compostela. And I will be 60 in 20 something days. Okay, so my name is Lucille. I'm 36 in like uh, four days. <laughs> and um, I started in France and I've just done the Camino, La Voie du Puy, Camino del Norte, y Camino Primitivo. How long was that? It was like 51 days and a thousand uh, kilometers. My name is Chanel, Chanel Noss. Um, I'm from the States, originally from California, now living in Virginia. Uh, I just turned 40 on the Camino, and I just finished the uh, uh, Camino Frances, uh, starting in St. Jean uh, on June 10th. Uh, today is day 45 for me. Could you briefly, briefly describe your experience on the Camino? magical, enchanting, um, it felt like a rebirth is the best way I can describe it. I'm a Giulia, I'm from Italy, I'm uh, 37 uh, years old and uh, I'm in Santiago uh, after following and working in the Camino del Norte. What was your motivation? What was the motive behind you coming to walk the Camino de Santiago? Ooh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one because we, we're backpackers at home and we hike and backpack a lot. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at it as more of a, just a backpacking type of experience. Um, but I think we found probably more than we expected, especially from the people we met. The cultures, the countries, just personalities. It was more than we expected. That's a tough one for me. That's emotional. I think I needed to believe in myself. Sometimes life, you know, is tough and you question yourself and who you are and what you're capable of. And this confirms that to me, I see myself how God sees me. So. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, it's okay. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. You realize you're capable of more than you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, six uh, years ago, I um, broke my feet and uh, the doctors uh, were not sure that uh, one day in the future I will be able to uh, walk. And uh, not only walk, but uh, uh, they were not sure that um, uh, one day I could uh, uh, just uh, stand up and uh, so for um, uh, six uh, years I told, I say to me, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can. <laughs> and so this is the motivation that um, 
push me, that bring me to um, walk 900 kilometers. Congratulations, eh? <laughs> wow. Grazie. That's really, really impressive, eh? Okay, let's start with, with what did actually motivate you to walk the Camino? I, I think my soul had been searching for something like this for a long time. Um, I heard some dear friends telling me about the Camino because they had done it a couple of years back. And as soon as they were telling me the stories, I knew that was what I needed to do. Um, and I never knew when it was going to happen. I just knew it was going to at some point. Um, and I decided to take an opportunity uh, with work and asked for a three month sabbatical. And if it wasn't granted, I was going to leave because I needed to do it right now. Um, so within a month of making the decision, I was here in Spain and um, finally pursuing what my soul had been hungry for for so long. Hearing those inspiring stories, you might be feeling motivated to start your Camino journey. Before you embark, consider joining us on a special retreat designed to prepare you both physically and mentally. Our retreat offers personal guidance, expert advice and a supportive community to ensure you're ready for adventure ahead. Sign up to secure your spot and start your Camino with confidence. Click the link below to learn more and register for our pre-Camino retreat. Don't miss this opportunity to make your Camino experience truly unforgettable. <laughs> um, I just uh, lose like my job and my boyfriend the same week. <laughs> so it was, uh, <laughs> it was quite hard and uh, I just wanted to go forward and um, I knew that uh, the Camino will be the perfect uh, place to get some hope again. So. How? How would you describe the motivation that you had behind it? Um, I think it was a spiritual one because I, I knew that I needed to hurt for, from the other person, the other pilgrim and the, and the, I don't know, I, I, I know it was the good place to be, um, to, get, um, to get rich, to get uh, full of something. Did Camino help you to overcome your inner doubts? Yes. And in which way? Uh, just all the things that I've saw were so beautiful that I just get uh, full of uh, gratitude and the happiness and the hope. And that's just what I needed. So it was cool. I knew about the Camino during the pandemic. And I was going to come with all the friends that I know. Everybody wanted to come to Camino, and I ended up coming by myself. I started watching videos. I watched Camino tellers the most. Once I found Ricky and Erica, I, until one day I got tired of Ricky and booked my flight. <laughs> um. My main motivation was to find something within me. I wanted to know what am I missing? What, what is this thing? I wanted something spiritual. I wanted a physical challenge. And I, it turned out to be way more than I thought it would be. This, why didn't you tell anybody? But I didn't want to be discouraged. I didn't know if I was going to make it and I didn't want anybody to say, oh, we told you so. But I made it and I'm glad. I hope they're proud. If they're not, I... So you feel, when you finish the walk in the Camino today, you have called and everyone and told them that you finished. I finished. I sent a picture and they're like, there's a time zone different of eight hours. Mm -hmm. And they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> I must be proud, eh? I must be proud. Have you been planning already a new Camino? Yes. Yes, of course. I was going to throw away my boots when I got here. My boots are four years old and I was going to but I'm keeping them for the next Camino. Which way is going to be? I think I'm going to do either North or Primitivo. Oh. Oh. Maybe all the ways from St. John. What does your family say about you uh, walking the Camino after the injury? Of you preparing six years for, for walking? My family says that, uh, my family knows that I'm a little bit crazy <laughs> and uh, they, um, 
don't know all the truth. Uh, and so <laughs> they don't know that uh, from Santiago to Italy, I will come back uh, by work. Uh, because, uh, yes, it's a secret. <laughs> How does it feel to walk the Camino? Um, empowering. It's the first time I think I've really been proud of myself. Um, I overcame a lot of struggle during the Camino. Um, and, um, and the Camino, like, it broke me down, but built me back up and stronger um, with fierce love for myself. What were those? You okay to talk? Yes. <laughs> what were those difficult moments that you overcame? Um, a lot of doubt, I think. Um, uh, you know, there was there's physical, mental, emotional challenges through all of this. Um, when you start, about two weeks in, I think I kind of hit my rock bottom. And I, I had doubt in, you know, kind of what I was doing, why I was doing this. Was I truly doing this for myself? You know, was I going to be able to finish? Um, and if I didn't finish, was I going to be okay with that? Um, and, you know, again, like, was I truly doing this for myself? If, um, was I going to be okay with it? Was I going to let other people's opinions of whether or not I finished or how, how I chose to do my Camino experience. Was I gonna let that affect or, or um, sit with me in any way? And I, I talked to my mom and had a good cry of just, you know, I kind of needed to get all of these thoughts out. Um, and as soon as I did and had a good cry and I kind of felt better and just kept going. Cause that's just, you naturally, you just kind of want to keep moving forward. Um, and as I did, I was like, it doesn't matter what other people's thoughts are. And it doesn't matter how I choose to do my Camino, how I finish it, when I finish it. I think I was putting a big emphasis on, um, like keeping up with people that I had met along the way. And, um, and I realized it, I, I can go at my own pace. In the midst of, of capitalism, in the midst of massive tourism is Camino still a spiritual journey absolutely for sure no questions yes it may not be for everybody but if you're open to it and willing to accept it yes and and surrender yourself to it because if you push it away then no it's not going to come in but yeah if you if you're open to it it yeah. is for sure yeah yeah thank, thank you for subscribing, subscribing.